Okay, Dr. H here. This lesson will go over meiosis and sexual reproduction. Uh, first, just real quick about sexual reproduction uh, and the importance of meiosis. Meiosis, I remember, creates these haploid gametes. Uh, haploid meaning that they only have one copy of every chromosome, so we call those cells N. Uh, it's important that the organism makes these haploid gametes so that during fertilization, when the, the gametes come together to create the first uh, fertilized cell, the zygote, uh, that we recreate the correct uh, diploid number. And diploid cells 2N have two copies of every chromosome. And as you can see here, there are a few different uh, le sexual life cycles, so to speak. Uh, this one here, in, very common in protists and algae, has the diploid state existing only as a unicellular organism and immediately after fertilization uh, the single cell spores, the haploid spores, are made and then the gametes are formed and they come back together. Now this one in the middle here we're probably a little bit more familiar with. This is the very common animal stage where the now the haploid state, the gametes, are the unicellular state and they immediately come back together and only become multicellular in the diploid state. This one over here, this last one here, uh, is plants. And plants are a little unique because they have multicellular states both as diploid here and as the haploid state. Okay, so a few different ways of going about it. Before we get into talking about meiosis. I just want to refresh our memories about chromosomes and some of the different terms. Uh, things like homologous chromosomes and the difference between a homologous chromosome and a sister chromatid. Okay, remember that homologous chromosomes are, come in pairs. So on this karyotype here, this is a human karyotype. So you see all 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Remember that they come in pairs because one comes from one parent, the father, and the other comes from the other parent, from mom. And in this state, in this cell, uh, the chromosomes are, exist in a duplicated state. So they kind of have these two arms. And we call those two arms sister chromatids. Okay, so here's one sister chromatid kind of over here and the other sister chromatid over here. And it kind of looks like a mess. Let's go ahead. Those sister chromatids are formed during an S phase, during DNA replication. So sister chromatids, remember, are exact copies of each other. They have the exact same DNA sequence on them. Whereas the homologous chromosomes probably do not. Uh, they, homologous chromosomes may have the same genes on them, but mom and dad probably have different genes. They look a little different, different eye color, different hair color. So the exact DNA sequence will, will be a little bit different on the homologous chromosomes. And it's very important to keep this in mind when we're talking about meiosis because the homologous chromosomes uh, become very important during, uh, especially during meiosis one. Uh, here we have a cell. Uh, the N, 2N is 6, so N would equal 3, and there are three uh, maternal chromosomes. Remember, that means that they come from mom, so there's one here, uh, one here, and one here, and then there are three from dad, which match up, so one here, and that pairs up with this one over here. See that they are about the same size, so they have the same genes on them. Uh, this pair right here, and then the pair kind of going across. Okay, so just keep those terms in mind. Homologous chromosomes pair up one from mom, one from dad. Sister chromatids, on the other hand, are exact copies of each other, and they are formed within a single cell during DNA replication. All right, so let's talk about meiosis. Okay, meiosis uh, occurs in, there's two sets of cell division. And this here is meiosis 1. And remember, meiosis 1 is the reductive division. 
So that means we are starting with a 2N cell. Here, this would be a diploid cell that we're starting with. And we're going to end up with haploid cells. So we're going to reduce the numbers of chromosomes. And just as in mitosis, uh, the stages all have the same names. Again, I'm not a big stage name person. I'm not going to make you memorize the names. Uh, but I, just before, you need to know what happens. And a lot of the events in meiosis are very similar to what happens in mitosis. Uh, we start here with an interphase cell. See, this, the DNA is existing in the chromatin state, so it's all kind of loose and just all floating around the cell. And here, they've, they keep the coloring here, so uh, blue and red for the two homologous chromosomes. And then during prophase 1 here, and I, I do use the name because it's very early in meiosis 1, uh, there are some interesting things that happen. Uh, the tetrads form. And a tetrad uh, literally means four. Okay, and there are four sister chromatids, which all line up together. Maybe the two homologous chromosomes get together, and they match up. Okay, and something very interesting happens at these structures called the chiasmata, and we'll talk about that on the next slide. We'll zoom in a little bit on that. Okay. Then the chromosomes all line up along the center of the cell. They did the same thing in, in mitosis, but now uh, they are staying with their homologous partner. So these two homologous chromosomes line up together. These two homologous chromosomes here line up together. And these two here line up together. Okay, so the homologous chromosomes line up during mitosis one and they stay together. And then when we get here, when the chromosomes are pulled apart, uh, the sister chromatids, as it says here, sister chromatids remain attached during meiosis I. But the homologous chromosomes separate. And the fact that these homologous chromosomes separate, so now there's only one copy of each chromosome in the cell, means that this is a haploid cell. Just because the chromosomes are in a duplicated state. So there are two chromatids on each chromosome. There's only one copy of each. So it is a haploid cell. Okay, going back here to, I said that there were some interesting things which happened in the beginning of pro, uh, prophase one of meiosis in these, uh, these chiasmata. What happens is something called what happens and is the, the colors of the chromosomes kind of change because I uh, don't don't get too confused by that. Now, instead of red and blue homologous chromosomes, we have yellow and purple. Okay, same deal. Okay, one from mom, one from dad. So these chromosomes form this very tight link with each other. They kind of zip together with these uh, enzymes and proteins that hold them together. And there's this structure called a chiasmata, which or a chi chiasma, I think, is the singular form. And what happens here is the two strands actually cross over, that's where I get this name, and the DNA will actually break. Remember, each chromatid is a single strand of DNA. And they'll break and then they'll reform on the homologous chromosome. So you see here, on this single piece of DNA here, if I can just kind of draw a line next to it without writing over it, uh, there's DNA of the yellow, which say that came from mom, and there's also at the ends here, there's purple DNA, hey, that, that came from dad. So on one piece of DNA, you have sequences from two sources, from both parents. A very, very important source of genetic diversity, okay, this mixing up of genes from the two parents, okay, one of the major sources of genetic variability, which is kind of the whole point of sexual reproduction. Okay, moving on into meiosis 2. There is really no interphase between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Sometimes there's a very, very short interphase, but there is no DNA replication. Okay, remember the, the chromosomes are already in a replicated state, so it they, they doesn't need to divide again. But meiosis 2 uh, is very, very similar to 
mitosis, okay, almost similar. If you sat down and watched a cell without being able to count the chromosomes, go through meiosis 2 and mitosis, it would look pretty much similar, pretty much exactly the same. Uh, chromosomes, uh, they're probably already condensed, but if they did loosen up a little bit in the chromatin, they will come back together. Spindle apparatus, spindle fibers form. Here you see all the chromosomes line up right along the center. And now, when the chromosomes are pulled apart, the sister chromatids do separate. Okay, so this separates the sister chromatid. And I shouldn't have just crossed that out. So now we are end up, end up with four haploid daughter cells. Okay? And if you notice, all of these cells are genetically unique. Okay, both in uh, whether they have the chromosomes from mom or from dad, and also because of crossing over. And we'll, we'll come back to this genetic diversity and uh, how we can measure that. And here we go, genetic diversity. When the chromosomes line up during meiosis 1, okay, there's a couple ways they can do it or actually there's a number of ways they can do it, depending on how many chromosomes there are. For this one, a very simple cell, now we just have a N of 2, just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, we have this possibility where all the blue chromosomes are on one side and the red chromosomes are on the other side. Okay, That is likely that could happen. Uh, the other possibility here is that the blue and red are on opposite sides. So blue number 1 is on this side, and blue number 2 is over on this side. And this leads to four possible combinations of gametes, of haploid cells. These cells here have two blue chromosomes. These cells here have two red chromosomes. So those are different. These cells here have a blue number one and a red number two. And this last set of cells here has a red number one and a blue number two. So these are all genetically unique cells. So in our bodies, when, we, when meiosis is happening and making gametes, we are making genetically unique gametes. And you can measure how many unique combinations there are by this formula here, okay, 2 to the n power. And n, remember, is the haploid number. So here, haploid number is 2, n equals 2. So 2 to the second is 4, and we got 4 combinations. For humans, where n equals 23, and I'll have to fix that, uh, 2 to the 23rd equals uh, 8 million plus genetic, unique genetic possibilities. Okay, just with lining up the chromosomes on different sides, okay, you can make 8 million unique gametes. Okay, add that to the diversity that comes along with crossing over, which can happen any number of times along the chromosome, and you come up with pretty much an infinite number of possibilities. And then there's another level of diversity where you have random sperm meeting up with a random egg. So there's lots and lots of sources for genetic diversity during sexual reproduction, and that really is the, the main advantage, the big strength of sexual reproduction, is that your offspring are genetically unique from the parents, and they are then able to perhaps have a better combination of genes, better able to adapt to the environment. So what happens when meiosis goes wrong? Because as we know, things always go wrong. Uh, the main error in meiosis is what we call a non-disjunction. Okay, there's the term right there. What this means, a non-disjunction, means that the chromosomes do not separate correctly. And this can either happen in meiosis 1, or it can happen in meiosis 2. Okay, here's normal meiosis, just to compare to. Uh, Non-disjunction during meiosis 1, here you see both pairs of this homologous chromosome are separating down here into this cell. And this cell, over here, is not getting any. So if meiosis 2 then, can, then goes on normally, uh, we end up with num bad numbers in all of the chromos on all of the gametes. Okay, the gametes on this side 
and end up with an n plus one number so that would be in humans that would be 24 chromosomes and over here these gametes end up with n minus one which would be 22. Okay, if the non-disjunction occurs during meiosis 2, so that is now happening down here, the sister chromatids do not separate, and now there's only two of the four gametes are incorrect. You have one and plus one, so one would have 24, this one would have 22, and then these two over here are normal. This arm of meiosis 1 ends up normal, okay, functional perfect gametes. So it's obviously much worse to have this error occur during meiosis 1, where all of the gametes are messed up. Okay, and these errors lead to things like trisomies. Okay, If you have uh, an N plus 1, where you have an extra copy of a chromosome. Okay, and we talked about Down syndrome and a couple other disorders. Um, and they can also happen in these sex chromosomes, and we talked about some of the disorders there. Okay. That's it.